Hi, welcome back to my workshop. Last time you saw these two big bits of wood, they are on my sawmill. Now today I'm just going to uh, pair them to go underneath the big milling machine, which I'll show you in a second. We need to drill a couple of holes through them. I'll chamfer the edges a bit, cut them to length, square the ends off. Uh, just a bit of general bush carpentry, I'd say. It doesn't have to be furniture grade today. This is the milling machine that uh, the blocks are going under. I'm presently rebuilding it. Made in India, apparently. Weighs a ton. Well, thereabouts. Awfully heavy to move. Now, it's sitting on blocks of wood now, but I need to lift it up a little bit further. Hence these big noggins we're cutting today. So where these bolt holes are, uh, there's one in here, another on the other side and two at the back as well. I'll drill through the new noggins and um, put some threaded bar right through so I can bolt it to the actual timber itself. And I might have to do a little bit of a degreasing job. I've started at the top but uh, the bottom section hasn't been done yet. One end. I've just realised something. I'm using the wrong power saw. Uh, the old saw that I was using had been dropped and the base plate is bent. Hence why it's not cutting 100% square. Good thing it's bush carpentry today. Causing me a problem. There we go. Beautiful colour. Anyway. Oh. oh, that's nothing. A good sharp chisel and a good flogging won't fix. Especially when I look at the damage. Oh, move that around there. There we go. See, it's not too bad. Fixable. Make 
sure it squares on the same way. Oh, I Drills. That's enough for monkey for me. Okay, that's one down, one to go. Just gonna make the other one a match. Give or take a bit. And um, get them under the machine. After I clean the machine, that is. Anyway, I'll start working on the next one. Okay, second one's completed. <clears throat> right, now I have two very large, very heavy blocks of wood to go underneath my milling machine. But uh, before I put them under the mill, I just need to degrease the mill and um, jack it up, I guess, and put them under. I might even uh, run some linseed oil over these first. Yeah, I'll just give these a, uh, a liberal dose of um, linseed oil. Just to uh, prevent it drying out and cracking a bit. A smell triggers memory. As soon as I smell this, I think of the old Lindsay putty with my grandfather fixing a window. I put the putty in around the window. Okay, that's a nice little bit. Two drops. Okay. Okay, time has come to uh, degrease the machine. Don't like doing this sort of work. Yuck. Anyway, that's the uh, main culprit down that end. I'll give it a good spray and a, let it soak for a bit, scrub it off hopefully. 
make it looking half decent. So, uh, first up on one, just lift that knee up as high as I can. Give me a bit more room under there. And see how we go. That's a good work out. Oh. Well, I'll give her a good soak. Spread all down this big razor. Oh man, that's going to take some scraping. Yuck, 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 yuck. As I've mentioned before in some of my other videos, we live kind of remote out here. We're 45 minutes to the nearest town. That's got a population of mm, 200. Um, now, not much there. Service station, cafe, and a pub. The pub's not always, no, not always even open. And, uh, Yeah, the other direction, it's an hour to town. Uh, much better town. Um, it's about 2,000 people, I guess. It's maybe, maybe, yeah, about that, I guess. But very limited to what you can get there. There is a supermarket. Here is poison because we've got a captive audience. So you have to go another hour past that to get to a major town, which has got you know, Woolworths, Audi, Coles, a large hardware store, not Bunnings. If you want to go to Bunnings in that direction, it's three hours. Uh, and going back to the first direction, you um, go past a, a small little town of 200 people. Then after that, you've got oh, close to an hour, 45 minutes. No, yeah, about another 45 minutes. Get to the next town, which same deal. It's got a supermarket, couple, couple thousand people. Um, it does have two hardware stores, neither of which are really big. Um, you can get basic stuff here, like light fittings, screws, nails, that sort of stuff. If you're looking for something in particular, uh, I guarantee they won't have it. Um, so you've got to go another hour beyond that to get to Bunnings. So it's two and a half hours one direction to Bunnings and three hours the other direction. So we don't run out of stuff. Whatever you put on the list. So when you go to town eventually, so now you go to town once a month. Even less if I can help it. Yeah, you go to, uh, go to Bunnings or wherever. With your list, you buy all this stuff on the list. Sometimes you forget, it's been on the list that long, you forget what it's actually for when you buy it. Or you realise you don't need it because of 
found something else to do that job with. You know, just sort of botched it up with something else. But, you know, you just got to do what you do. But, uh, oh, this is the best stuff. I don't like this stuff. Oh, that's one of the worst jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Scrape the shit off an old machine. I reckon they were the only one thing worse than that. But it's still got shit. Okay, that's six and a half hours of cleaning. Well, that was a lot of grease and grime and crap stuck on there. Been on there for years by the feel of it. So anyway, uh, next job is to get the pallet jack underneath it, jack it up. I don't know if I can go quite high enough with that pallet jack or not to get our new blocks under there. But we'll give it a go. If not, uh, I'll just get a couple of bottle jacks under there as well. Anyway, we'll give it a go, see what happens. There's one thing I really hate. Do you think you finish cleaning, then you lower the table, bring the knee down, and uh, look behind the knee. And I just put all the chemicals away and everything else, so it's just going to have to stay there for today, because I've had enough. Till tomorrow. Well, I've got the blocks next to it, where it's going to go. Next stage is jack it up, slide the blocks under. I'm going to have to re-jack again with some bottle jacks or something because the width of the trolley, I won't be able to get these blocks in far enough. But I'll be able to get them underneath to hold it up anyway. Um, I guess if you're watching this video, it means it didn't fall on me and squash me, unless the video is entitled YouTuber Squashed by Mill. Um, yeah, well, wish me luck. Okay, here we go. Oh, first floor. What's on the first floor of an apartment building? Ladies' underwear. Oh, second floor. Oh. I don't know what's on the second floor either. Can't think now. Oh. Damn, it's heavy. This power jack says three tons. Written on it. I know this is just on a ton or just under a ton. Very close to a ton. Bugger. Well, I say bugger because that's as high as we can go. Oh dear me. I don't know what I have to do. I'm going to pack that up. Lower it down, put some blocks of wood on the trolley, and then lift it up. So I need to go and find some more wood. Just turn you off for a while.
be sitting. On the new blocks. So we'll get to the right height. As you can see, the holes where I'm going to put those bolts through aren't going to line up because the trolley is too wide. I'm going to lower it down on those new blocks. Now I have to get a couple of bottle jacks and lift it up and uh, slide that in a bit further until those holes line up and lower it back down. And then do the same at the back. So we're going to raise the sweat. The humidity is pretty high today and oh, I'm wearing find a couple of jacks. Just so you can see how I did it. Just um, lift up the jacks a little bit. I ain't got to go up just enough to take the weight off that wood so I can slide that wood in uh, and then just drop the wood to thread a bar down a hole. Um, anyway, bear with me and I'll do it. Have a big washer first, smaller washer because the hole's a bit bigger than that. And then the nut. So what I'm going to do a bit of tape, tape it on there, hold it all with the spanner, slide it in, and hopefully that works. Do it up from the top, and we should be good. I'll give it a go. Okay, the tape's all holding it in the right place. I should even be able to get the spanner on without interfering with that tape. I hope, maybe. That and should be able to get that in the hole right. Slide that in, see what happens. Right, I'll move the camera down a bit closer. Okay, well, whoops. That feels alright. Feels like the nuts staying on the spanner. <laughs> Oh, that felt like it went through. Let's see if it screws up. Oh, hey, the guy's a genius. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay, just going to do another three times. Let's move into the next one. Uh, just not too shaky. Yeah. <clears throat> I even found a pretty quick way of doing them up tape-wise too. It worked all right. That's just too easy. Alright, I won't be able to fill in the back one, so I don't think I can get the tripod around there as well as me. I'll turn that off. Alrighty, just another small problem to solve. The front ones are okay, the back ones, where the 
in there so it's not flat. See, when you put a washer in there, it doesn't sit flat. That just bugs me. So what I'm going to do, take this out, just grind a flat bit so it sits flat. And that will be a lot better. So I'm going to have the camera in here and an angle grinder. So I'll show you when I've done it. Okay, I've got that ground out. Up now. Yeah, that makes it uh, just that much more tolerable to use. You're not bending over. Now you just put your hands in front of you. Boy, you just got to come up a little bit to use the, the device. Be uh, yeah, so much taller. That's just nice. Don't have to bend. It's good. Okay, what I'm doing now is I'm going to drill a hole through here. Uh, put a bolt through it. A couple of washers on the side to squeeze it tight so none of these cracks here open up too far. I don't think that would open too far but that wood is still a little bit green. Mind you, the tree was cut down oh, more than 12 months ago. But uh, being such a hard dense wood just takes literally years for a log that size to, to totally dry out. If you cut that for firewood, it still wouldn't burn for another couple of years yet. It's, uh, it's just too tight, won't dry out. So, anyway. normally all timber as far as I know when it dries out it never shrinks lengthwise only in its thickness so um, when I think of it I'll come back and retighten these you know in six months time or whenever just to make sure that it hasn't shrunk too far all these are coming loose so There we go, so I'll just do the same to all four of them. Well that's that part of the project complete. A little bit more work on the mill to do yet, but um, those noggins came up really good. It's at the perfect height to work at now. And uh, if you like what you've been seeing, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much.